Maya, can I start with you? You heard what I had to say about Kemi Badenoch. I think you agree with me. Are you hearing from your YouTube channels, as popular as it is, that actually people are starting to take notice of Kemi? Yes, um, thanks for having me, firstly, um, Darren. Uh, my channel are very diverse. Do we have the supporters of uh, Penny Morden, Less Trust, and uh, Kemi now? But I think you make a good point because um, Kemi is making waves and she's uh, technically coming out of nowhere in terms of the public kind of national media persona, but she is already making a lot of noise. And I think we just need one candidate. And it's embarrassing that we only have one candidate who's not just willing to be anti-woke primarily, but also focusing on telling the truth and being a proactive uh, potential leader. Because in these situations, the Tory party keep going with um, the concept of strong and stable. It's more reactive. They did it with the 2016 Theresa May, failed. They did it with the 2019 Jeremy Hunt's campaign, failed. Serious candidate for serious times. Rishi Sunak is doing the exact same thing. And the most candidates are going to be doing the exact same thing. I, I expect Penny Morden's campaign to be similar, uh, kind of more strong and stable, but slightly different to Rishi. Uh, Kemi, so far, is the only candidate. And I think Soela Braverman is trying to do the same thing. Kemi is the only one who's basically not just saying tell the truth, but be more proactive and actually come up with a vision. And that's very important. William, what are the polls tell you? Because Con Holm, for my viewers that don't know, Con Holm run polls where the membership actually give their views and they're very, very popular within the Conservative Party. But what does it tell us so far? Because, correct me if I'm wrong, but Ben Wallace was up there, right? Yes, so um, consistently now um, for several months, Ben Wallace has been the most uh, popular candidate in our monthly survey. Um, to be the next lead. But of course, we've just got the news uh, this afternoon that Ben Wallace um, will not be running to be the leader of the Conservative Party. Um, in that case, it looks like the field is uh, relatively wide open. In recent polls that we've done, um, it's suggested that Penny Mordaunt is the second most popular um, candidate, with uh, Kemi Badenoch actually coming in about fifth um, behind uh, Liz Truss and Nadim Sahawi. Um, so in that sense, it seems like the race is relatively open. However, um, over the last 24, 48 hours, we've seen that Rishi Sunak has rapidly accumulated um, the largest number of MPs so far, and he's announcing them in a sort of series of batches. Um, so I would say that Rishi Sunak, um, actually on paper now, looks very much to be the front runner. And um, whilst Ben Wallace's um, endorsement will be well sought after, um, I can certainly see a sort of uh, Rishi uh, Wallace team in which Wallace was promised the ability to say at defence or you know, be made, say, deputy prime minister, etc as being one that would likely sweep the board, um, yeah. especially amongst the, not just the parliamentary party, but even potentially amongst our members. Indeed. But, William, does the front runner, runner in the Tory elections, right, the front runner is always the one that ends up coming second, right? Oh, not always, but it, not you know, really. it happened with no, David that's, Cameron, that's something didn't of a political it? cliche. Is that um, a cliche? Sorry, that's, that's quite yeah, all right. That's, cliche. <laughs> that's actually incorrect, largely. Um, it depends on the dynamics of the individual race. For example, Boris Johnson was the clear front runner last time um, and was the winner. Same with Theresa May um, in 2016. Um, now, if you can think about previous examples where people who weren't expected to win have won, both David Cameron came from third place um, to first um, in 2005, but then the contest was much longer. It was staged over several months, and he made a famously um, excellent speech um, at the 2005 uh, party conference, which uh, pushed him straight into the um, lead. Now, there are some who fear... And um, perhaps that um, Rishi Sunak could be the uh, Michael Portillo um, of this year's contest, because Michael Portillo was the front runner um, in 2001 until essentially all the other people running uh, turned against him. Um, and it's thought that because the relationship between the Prime Minister and Rishi Sunak has uh, deteriorated um, so greatly, that if it seems, as it does increasingly at the moment, that Rishi Sunak will likely be um, the front runner and the next Prime Minister, you will see an operation within Number 10 to try and. Um, queer the pitch as yes. much as possible for Rishi Sunak and try to keep him out. Well, indeed, that's going to be interesting to watch, isn't it? Now, the Labour MP, former Labour MP even, Stephen Pound, is patiently waiting there. Stephen, can I ask you, who would you fear were you still an MP? Who would actually, do you think, put the fear of God into Labour MPs more than most? Well, there's only really one person. I have to say, I mean, Rishi, forget it. Um, you know, he, he's weird, he's entitled, he's a multimillionaire. You know, there's all the, the tax dodging stuff. No, um, Rishi Sunak, bring him on. We'd love to. Kemi Badenoch, well, if she, the best she can do is to come up with Mr Hunt from Ipswich, who says she's smooth, uh, 
not smooth, uh, authentically smooth, but not really smooth. You know, that's the best you can come up with. You know, um, as far as we're concerned, and I think earlier on, the, the Grimes Time manifesto about what we actually want for this country is rather more impressive, and um, it, 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 you would actually got my vote. But look, the reality is, it's going to be a team. It's, like it's going to be a man and a woman team for the Tories. There's no way they're going to have a, sort of a Wallace Sunak team. That ain't going to happen. Uh, Tom Tugan isn't going to do it. He's going to be Foreign Secretary without a shadow of a doubt. The team that would really, really put the frighteners on us in the Labour Party, without a doubt, would be Penny Morton as number two and Jeremy Hunt as number one, because it would be the complete antithesis of Johnsonism. And Johnsonism now is as toxic as certain leaders have been in the Labour Party in the past. So any connection with Johnson, forget it. That's a dead weight. Rishi Sunak sat there with his arm around him all those years. Not a chance. Hunt is untouched, he's untainted, and he's free from that. He is the person who could come to the country and a contest between him and Keir Starmer may not actually have people dancing in the street and leaping around with excitement, but it would be serious, sober, sensible and good for the nation in a time of utter global, continental and domestic crisis. And frankly, mate, that's what we want. My uh, Stephen Pound there saying that actually who Labour would fear the most would be Jeremy Hunt because he would cut through and... Actually, I would argue he would just be exactly as the same as Sir Keir Starmer. Because, in my opinion, it wasn't what Boris Johnson stood for that was unpopular, right? That won him that massive landslide in 2019, the biggest since Maggie T was in office. Actually, it was the poor implementation and the other stuff that went on alongside of it, right? There's Stephen Pound showing us the Thatcher <laughs> yeah. designs. Yeah, I mean, it, it is interesting, of course, uh, if, if, if you um, get the opinion of... Uh, not just the Labour side, but also the, the wet side of the Tory party, it's, it's some, it's in their interest to actually uh, push for certain candidates because they have their own interests. If you ask Keir Starmer, he would probably say, yeah, yeah let, let's have um, Jeremy Hunt as Prime Minister. That would be a good idea. Uh, but in reality, a lot of times, it's actually because they, they, they have lived in their own bubble for the past few years and couple of decades. Uh, they, they, the so-called strong and stable establishment types. Right now, we need a proactive visionary Sort of like a Tony Blair in 97, when he had a lot of money to spend, he didn't stand on a platform of uh, just reactive. He actually wanted to do something. It's now time to actually make some changes. Again, not just 97, but 79 by Margaret Thatcher. And I just find it sad that we only have one or maximum two candidates who are offering that. One of them is Kemi Badenoch. William, where have these candidates actually been for the past you know, few months? It's been... Uh, widely reported that Boris Johnson's future was on a knife edge for some time now after the drip, drip of scandal after scandal. Now, many of my viewers, William, may well be of the view that this was a constant attrition of an attempt to remove a, a, a very popular prime minister. But where have these candidates been? Because it strikes me that they're very disorganised, William. Am I wrong? Am I being unfair? Um, well, I think obviously the team that are most organised are Rishi Sunak, hence why they've managed to get out in front so very quickly. We know Sunak has been um, planning a leadership campaign for quite a while. He almost moved against the Prime Minister um, in December and January at the sort of initial height of the party gates uh, um, scandal. Um, but I would also say that a lot of these teams are just being sort of written off on the back of a fag packet. So we're lots of MPs um, who think they might have a tilt at the leadership or think that their best way of trying to retain a role in Cabinet or even earn one um, is to set up a team now. You also see, yeah. say, Tugendhat, for example, um, was well prepared, so hence he had an op-ed and a telegraph as quickly as he can manage. Um, but I would just like to come back quickly on a point that uh, Stephen was making. Um, it was nice to see that the old arguments of the reactionary left can still be trotted out in 2022, um, but I would suggest that Stephen might want to check an opinion poll every once in a while, um, because the agenda that the Prime Minister ran on in 2019 um, rather than the Prime Minister himself. When he, remember when he came into office in 2019, he was okay. the most unpopular Prime Minister in recent memory. Um, but it was actually the agenda that won the election in 2019. Yeah. According to all the polls, Rishi Sunak is by far the most trusted person to both implement Stephen, that agenda. Stephen, very, brief, the most, very, very uh, the briefly most come back to that. Win over voters. Yeah. I mean, the, the, in, in 2019, um, the leadership of the Labour Party wasn't enormously popular on the doorstep, and you, you can't ignore that factor. Uh, but the second thing is that the 2019 Tory party manifesto was Boris Johnson made flesh. He was the manifesto. He was the image. He was the person who came to the country okay. with, with the slogan. Well, so we'll that, see what it happens. The it was Johnson. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.